Hey guys, it's Tristan. Uh, welcome to uh, this section of Beach Breakaway on your couch and me in this chair. Um, so I, I'm Tristan, of course, like I just said. Uh, I'm an intern here at Mount Zion. Uh, so we'll, JJ and Hunter uh, talked with me and Dylan and asked us to give a message here at Beach Breakaway. We're not at the beach, but here we are. Um, so uh, just to get started, if you want to flip to James 1, um, that's where we'll be today. Uh, or whenever you're watching this tonight, this morning, whatever. Uh, but I just wanted to give y'all a story real quick. So, do y'all know the little hard candies? They're called Warheads, and they have the the most sour stuff on the outside of it. But as soon as you get to the sour stuff, it is the most insanely delicious hard candy you will have ever. Like your your mouth's all blue or green or whatever color you had and it, it's just it's incredible it's, it's just really tastes good so the thing is you got to get through that that really sore or really sour stuff first so i was in fifth grade and i had a bunch of them from halloween and i like to have them and be like i'm tough because i can have the sour you know so i'd take it and i'd hold it in my mouth and get through the sour well i realized that if it was at the tip of my tongue it was the most painful so i was like i'm going to put it at the tip of my tongue well, I put that warhead at the tip of my tongue, and I kept it there like a man. And uh, sure enough, <laughs> for about three weeks after that, I had the tip of my tongue pretty pretty inflamed and uh, couldn't taste with it for three, four weeks. It was pretty terrible. So uh, lesson learned here, don't, don't put sour stuff at the tip of your tongue. It's not a good idea. Kind of ruined warhead for me. I still eat them from time to time, but... James chapter 3, um, so I'll read uh, verses 1 and 2. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with a greater strictness, for we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not s stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, um, able to bride his whole body. Uh, so I've always, I've always heard that the best way um, to learn is to teach. Uh, so, you know, I guess the, the best kind of illustration I can give you is, you know, recently I just started, you know, I felt called to ministry and I've given a couple of messages. Um, I know a few of you have heard it before. Some of y'all probably don't know who I am at all, but that's okay. Hi, I'm Tristan. Let's be friends. Um, but what's, what's happened is, is through having to actually teach the word and what I'm about to do, um, to you guys, um, and what I've found, I've learned so so much more than I have just getting into the scripture without the responsibility and um, just the, the 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 pressure of really trying to figure out what God would have me voice to y'all, not just the pressure of trying to see what God would want to tell me. Um, it seems it, it it's become just a very different level of responsibility, and through that, it says, uh, you know those that that we who teach will be judged with a greater strictness um i read that after feeling called to ministry and just the um it, it that that weighs heavy um that's uh it, it's it's something that really does make me feel responsible for uh the things i do even more so than before i mean i'm if i'm trying to set an example for you guys um, and even more so, you're trying to set an example for your lost friends and everything. We have to uh, really make sure um, we're coming across the right way because we're expected to be judged with the greater strictness. So in uh, James 3, verse 2, uh, the second sentence, um, And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so they obey us we guide their whole bodies as well look at the ships also though they are so large and are driven by strong winds they are guided by a very small rudder whenever the will of the pilot directs wherever it is um, so a lot of you uh, might not know what a bridle and a bit is for a horse or you might have heard that before but don't don't really don't know what it means or what, what, what the importance is um, so this you know black strap or multiple straps and buckles and whatnot this is actually the bridle um, so this goes over the horse's face and the, the ears would pop out up here and um, 
this bit right here is the piece that actually goes into their mouth. And uh, uh, here you will actually have the reins that would attach um, and come up and over its head so that you can actually steer the horse um, and know where it goes. So if you can just imagine uh, a bar that's literally put in your mouth, um, it's something that it, it's something that would you would not like. You, you wouldn't just want somebody to shove a bar in your mouth and start pulling it which way so you start walking in different directions. Um, so it, James is talking about here how you actually have to tame the horse. Uh, the horse has to be comfortable with you, has to trust you, um, or has to trust humans in general uh, for it to be able to take something like this and actually start listening. Or um, even by force sometimes uh, they'll be taught because uh, this big bar pushing pressure points would not is not a good time I'm sure um, so you know we get this imagery of, uh, of of a horse being steered and it actually talks about um, since they'll obey us since we're guiding them with the bit um, it'll actually guide their entire body um, moving on from that he even explains how a ship's rudder I know most of you actually probably know what a rudder is which is the little um, part that's going to be in the back of the ship uh, just it's going to be you know vertical with the ship and it's going to allow you to steer um, and so the pilot is able to actually turn that just this a little thing uh, to steer the entire big ship or, or uh, boat um, and so with that we're able to get this idea of these are controllable things um, and it the the importance of it being controllable and everything actually kind of goes into the next verse which is verse uh, five. See also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire, and the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, standing the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. Um, you know, this this imagery that uh, James is giving us is, is, is kind of really interesting you know saying that the tongue is a fire um, is, is a really interesting thing we know fire is very destructive um, if I know we've been in a pandemic recently so we haven't uh, really been focusing on things that happened a month ago but uh, the Australian forest fires uh, were absolutely horrendous um, and they uh, tore up so many things so through that I mean that was all over national news and it's not even personally affecting us uh, that we know of um, in our individual lives, but you know, all all it took was one leaf to get um, just a little bit too hot um, from the heat of the sun, and and boom, you have this little fire that grows into acres and acres and acres of land just being completely destroyed. Um, that'll have to that'll take years for it to be able to regrow and um, get back to where it was before, if ever. So since a fire can just go so out of control as it did in the Australian fires, um, well, well, the things that we say can just go way out of control. Um, you can just say one thing. I mean, have you have you guys ever said anything um, that you immediately regretted and probably still has some kind of effect on you today or at least something you said two weeks ago that still has an effect on you today because you smarted off to your parents and now you're grounded and you're stuck at home? Uh, and grounded, so you literally can't do anything at all. That's pretty bad. Um, but yeah, you say you say one thing, and then and it, it just it it, it can completely um, destroy uh, trust. It can completely destroy so many so many things. So uh, we're gonna move on. Uh, James three uh, verse seven. Um, For every kind of beast and bird of reptile. Uh, and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Um, so we were just talking about how it's something that uh, that we really need to steer. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're not, you know, you grab hold of the reins and you're able to pull that bit on that horse and guide where that horse goes. Um, and the you know the horse is already tame and, and it, it's already it already recognizes when that when that bit's in its mouth it, it knows what to do um, but James is saying here we we literally cannot tame the tongue which means we through that we cannot 
tamer our whole bodies, right? So what we have to do is we have to constantly be on guard. Um, every moment and every second of our of our daily lives and, and time we're, we're speaking um, or even in times of silence and kind of thinking of the things we might say or thinking of things in, in, in our mind that we would say, um, that those are those are times where we have to constantly be on guard. I mean, if you're on a horse that is not tamed, um, it's gonna go crazy. I mean, everybody's been to a rodeo before. If you haven't, I don't know how you live in Alabama, but um, you, you you go to a rodeo and these guys come out. They'll be on a bull, or on a bull, sometimes horses. Um, and I don't know if you've ever seen anything on any other any person on any other animal, but the but the you know the animals constantly going buck wild crazy um we have to remember that's it's this is imagery that that james has given us for our own tongue uh we have to our, our we're you know we're fleshy fleshly beings we have to um take up our cross as, as it says in luke or as luke says we have to take up our cross and um die to our flesh daily so through that we we've got to constantly just be on guard and not you know, in the, in the moment, not say anything dumb because you can be fine or whatever. And, you, you know, you might think that your heart's in a good place, but as soon as you say something um, that exposes the truth of where you really are, um, that's what can change everything. So uh, in James chapter 3, we're going to go into verse 8 now. Um, and we're going to actually read uh, to the end. Um, with it, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing, my brothers. These things ought not to be so. Um, does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. Um, so what James is saying here is we... We say good things, we say bad things. I mean, that we're, we're human beings, this is, this is what we do. And especially as Christians, we want to be good to people. So we're trying to say nice things. We're trying to um, be kind, courteous, and, and, and you know, see our bodies the right way, right? Um, and, and our actions and everything. Uh, but sometimes our, you know, fleshly side comes out, and that's where we sin, right? So, you know, we, we, have, this, we have this really big confliction here. Um, within our own selves and our, and our own actions and what we say um, specifically. Uh, he, he continues to give this, this imagery that you can't have a, you can't have like, you're not going to go to the ocean, you're not going to get, you're not going to go to the ocean and get fresh water. It's all salt water. And you're not going to go to a pond that is nowhere near the ocean and is a freshwater pond and get salt water. Or you're not going to go to a spring and get salt water. It's just, that's just not how that works. Um, and so, uh, if if that were the case, that there'd be a lot of confliction. Um, the salt would overpower um, the fresh water, and, and there would be there would be no way to actually separate those things. Um, so just the same as a, a pure heart and a heart of, of evil and wickedness and um, ill intent, um, you can't have a pure heart that has any bit of wickedness or um, anything, because that would just completely overpower uh, the, the the purity of the heart um, in and of itself. So if your um, if your if your heart is what is guiding your tongue, um, and your gut and your tongue is what's guiding your heart, then uh, they should be one and the same. So if you're saying things that are just absolutely um, absolutely not bringing glory to God in any way, shape, or form. Um, then that is going to be something that is going to be that exact conflict. Uh, the wickedness is coming in, and it is exposing where your heart really is. Um, so really, you know, try to watch what you say, and when you say things that are just not um, bringing glory to God, really examine yourself, examine your heart, um, and, and really go to the Lord and, and ask Him to to continue to ex expose, you know, your, your weaknesses uh, so that you can turn more to Him and He can purify you.